presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m., and 3 p.m. And as uh, we've uh, said here, um, there was a lot of hurry up and wait for earnings. We were looking for a fairly large move. Uh, this morning in the newsletter, uh, the uh, model was showing something that was going to be about uh, three standard deviations away from uh, the, the normal. Um, so not real surprised to see that we saw at least a 25%, uh, excuse me, a 25-point move in the S&P cash. Uh, what we do have is very interesting cross-currents. Uh, the dollar index is 97,338. Uh, and, of course, this is where everybody's been uh, in the uh, Trump administration, Treasury, the Fed, uh, pretty aggressive at keeping the dollar down, but uh, not so much so far today. We got up uh, past uh, 97, actually spiked about 97.45 and back down at this range today. So we did have that. Uh, gold seemed to make at least, uh, eh, I wouldn't say a, a low, but certainly an interesting position today um, where you're probably fairly close to some kind of low. Uh, so I've got a lot of a lot of balls in the air right now, but of course we're getting very close to testing all-time highs. So what kind of volume are you having? We're having anything close to the 10 or 12 billion shares in the total market that we've had before? Well, we're just at about 4 billion shares as we start the show. So everything we look at out here looks uh, a little tepid. Uh, not really a lot of gusto, not a lot of gravitas as we hit these highs. Now, does that mean we can't push a little higher, go over them and still close below them with a light volume? Does not mean that, but it does mean that uh, what you want to be doing right now is looking for those stocks that are the weakest as this uh, market pushes to the highs for possible plays if we get a good signal that says short this market. Um, what you really didn't want to have if you were bullish was to come up here and test these highs on light volume. Certainly, unless something radically changes in the next couple of days, that is pretty much what I think is you're going to get. A um, lot of real heavy pushing, um, massive euphoria. I went and looked at some of the uh, stock boards today and uh, challenged the beliefs of many people and they're i you know the people that are bullish are as bullish as anybody was uh in 2000 and 2007 or in 1929 so if you're talking about the kind of euphoria uh, that hits a market we certainly at least from what i can tell kind of have that. They're not real concerned that they're in a lot of volume. They're not real concerned on a lot of other issues. Um, and that's always what concerns me. I'm always kind of worried about um, what's happening in the way that people are looking. Uh, got a quick message on gold here. Um, you, you never know, but uh, probably a, a fairly decent low risk trade. Uh, what else do we have going on out here that we want to look? Got a lot of earnings, and we're going to go through those uh, from last night and this morning. And then, of course, we're going to go into earnings um, tomorrow morning uh, after tonight. Uh, but after the bell tonight, we've got Snap, eBay, iRobot, Texas Instruments, TD Ameritrade, Six Flags, Edward Life Sciences, Canadian Pacific Railroad, and Stryker. Tomorrow morning, Boeing, Caterpillars, 
AT&T, Domino's, Biogen, Cheers, XM Holdings, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, SAP, Stanley Black & Decker, Anthem, uh, Boston Scientific, ST Micro Devices, uh, Northrop, uh, North Fork Southern Company, he said, Lithium Motors, Air Products, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, it just continues on till after the bell tomorrow night. So tomorrow, a murderer's row of earnings. Uh, everybody kind of saw at least uh, a little bit a leg uh, over the last 24 hours with earnings, and they're thinking, okay, yeah, we can still go higher. We can still go higher. There's always the trade deal that could save us. But uh, I continue to think that that trade deal probably gets signed uh, about a year from now. Uh, there's no real big hurry for anybody to sign it. Uh, us, because we're not getting a great deal yet, and for them, uh, they just uh, continue to pray that uh, they'll get somebody in that's uh, kind of milk toast on trade, and they'll be able to continue looting the coffers of the United States. Uh, what else is going on? That's kind of it. Light volume. We're going to look at a lot of charts today. Uh, we've got uh, some history. And you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. So, uh, Let's do a little of that history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1778 at 8 a.m., John Paul Jones, with 30 volunteers from a ship, the USS Ranger, launches a surprise attack on the two harbor forts at Whitehaven, England. Jones' boats successfully took the southern fort, but a second boat assigned to attack the northern fort returned to the Ranger without having done so, claiming to have been scared off by a strange noise. To compensate, Jones decided to burn the southern fort. The blaze, uh, blaze uh, ultimately consumed the entire town. It was the only American raid on the English shores during the American Revolution. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't attack them yet again. Ah, uh, you never know. Maybe it'd do some good. Uh, you never know. Uh, anyway, on this day in 1778. So we're going to get to some charts here fairly quickly. I um, was going to say, first one that really kind of hit me today was the cues and the volume. So we'll look at that. Why well, I'm not attacking the UK, uh, invading them again. Um, so far today, you've got about 21, 22 million shares going into the 36 million share high. Uh, this is the break of that high, so far anyway. Uh, and you know, did you get anything better that now? That was about it. Thirty-six million shares is what you're looking for, and you're breaking that out. I don't think you're going to get it at least in the QQQs. Uh, again, a lot of people probably front-running um, Microsoft earnings tomorrow, and the question is whether or not they can hold up to what they have. Anyway, we're going to go through the earnings today next. Then, uh, if we have time, we'll finish up with earnings after the bell tonight and tomorrow. So, uh, this is the time to start looking and looking hard. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back up uh, 25, 26 points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 141. Nasdaq's up 103. Russell 2000's up. Now uh, we'll call it 25. So a good day in the market so far. Just lacking a lot of volume. We're pushing uh, 4.1 billion shares on the consolidated COB market summary. And uh, what else do we have going on? Um, we're going to get to earnings here right away. Allerg uh, Agilent Technology, A, G, T's, and C's. Nope. That's a different one. Let me read this one so I actually know what it is. So I don't uh, go off half-cocked. Uh, folks, solution to life science. Yeah, A, G, T's, and C's. I thought I'm losing my mind. Anyway. Uh, DNA, DNA testing, DNA mutation. Uh, it did exactly what we talked about in a lot of these stocks, and that is it broke above with no sign of strength as it did. You had some little reversals. Today, you're back into the trading range under the low of the December 4th high of last year, 75.11. That had 4.2 million shares. Uh, you've got uh, 3 million shares about now, and it's trying to hold that high. So you got kind of a 50-50 chance, maybe not bad risk reward if this market's taking off. I dislike the fact that it did come down on fairly decent volume though last few days before earnings. Uh, Arista Networks um, also down a little bit. Not much going on out here for earnings. Uh, another one that went above its August 24th high with no sign of strength that broke out. It's back. Kind of close into the trading range. You got a little bit farther to go. The low of the day comes in at 315. You need to close below 31337 anywhere in the next two days. That may also signal a top in Arista Networks. Hasbro, the big winner of the day. Um, this thing's got a monster short uh, sale number on it. I'm going to look it up here. Uh, come on. Did I do that? I just did that, didn't I? I got to do it again. Come on, come on. There it is. Okay, has, H-A-S. Um, nine days to cover. 
which gives you good reason not to be on the wrong side of these during earnings if you're short. Um, kind of been interesting. Uh, Mattel, of course, it's brother or sister, not doing nearly as well. Down in the dumps, but um, kind of holding in that $12 range. Hormel, do I get to sing the spam song? I don't have it up. I should have had it up. Well, we'll get it next quarter. Down to the previous December 28th low is $38.60. About 12 cents higher than that at the low of the day today. Um, but about twice the volume so far already. Uh, as we said, uh, a couple more of these uh, military industrial complex stocks in the morning. But Lockheed Martin had a nice bump out here today, not into the all-time highs, but certainly a nice move with some decent volume. Uh, not a lot of stocks doing that these days. Uh, Procter & Gamble, a big miss out here. And, you know, you're basically going back to um, uh, basically mid-month. Everybody's in a losing position. Uh, today, you're down with about 10.4 million shares. So you're back at support. Not exactly sure why they missed. And I'll take a little bit more look at that tonight. Pulte Group up a bit. A lot of shorts in this. And, of course, some fairly bad uh, press going in to the last few days on home sales. But um, I guess investors decided not to look forward too hard at what Pulte Group is saying and much more about the last quarter. So I think they're kind of driving in the rear view mirror on that, but it's kind of hard to tell. Another stock that looks like it tried to, and did have a false break above its October 1st, 2018 high. It was uh, Perkin Elmer's, uh, the, I think they're the investment bunch, 9826 back on October 1st with 900,000 shares. Barely went above it to 103. But, I mean, the barely part is the 1 million shares. So it never really had a sign of strength as it broke above. It's come back down. You had kind of a new low out here at 91.56 today and a little bit of a reversal on a fairly decent day, but continues to look rather weak. Twitter, uh, also looking at um, a lot of uh, pop here going back in. Now, this is exactly... Uh, where you want to start looking to short it if you think these social media stocks are headed lower. does have some fairly decent volume today. You don't want to give this thing, you don't want to short it today, but wait two days. And if this thing still hangs around 41 and a half, 42, and all the volume falls out by Friday, that may be the filling of at least the half filling of this gap, which is where I kind of like to pull the trigger on it. These guys have a lot of problems. The earnings weren't that good. Basically, you have a lot of people short some of these going in to earnings, and uh, it's problematic. Um, Twitter, what has it got? 20, oh, 21 million shares short. And uh, I'm going to run them today on it. UTX, another one in that uh, industrial military complex. Uh, a big flash and doji out here today. On this one, as it goes back up into the 143, 42 September 21st high, I did uh, get there minus six cents on the spike today. You needed 7 million shares. You got about 4.2 million shares so far. So, again, some kind of weakness up there at the highs, not a lot of volume. Uh, to, 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 come on, come on. Waters, the big loser. Uh, out here today. And do we have the losing horn? Yes, we do. Okay. This filled all the gap of uh, the gap up on the 22nd of January this year that came up on 770,000 shares. And of course, uh, down uh, today on eh, 2.4 million shares so far. Is that right? So we got more volume already. I did kind of, I wouldn't say fill the gap, but it did go back and put a double gap back in to uh, this, and you do have some movement. Now, again, these guys are uh, big in Asia. They may tell you a little bit about what's going on. After the bell last night, 
Um, you had kind of a pop in Whirlpool. Didn't keep all of it today. Got up to 144.90 uh, early in the morning and has kind of rotated back down. Filled more than half of the gap higher. Volume's a little better. But again, you just don't have the juice to drive this market higher, which is kind of my complaint on most of what's going on here today in the church of what's happening now. So let's go ahead and look, and I'm going to not look at uh, so many stocks uh, from earnings. I want to go look at some of the stocks that I have on my list of stocks that I want to watch today, and we'll see how they are doing in the next segment. A little audible here because I'm looking for stocks uh, with some signals or maybe some plays here on the next day or two. So uh, we'll get going in the next segment. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we said, we're going to go through some of these stocks that look like they've been giving some signals. Uh, Re Pharmaceuticals, A-E-R-I. Testing the previous 2.4 million share low of February 11th, $38.11, uh, with uh, just 600,000 shares yesterday. Got the a eh, little bit of a bump, but not much in the way of volume on that one today. Uh, we also have First Majestic Silver kind of coming back into support areas. It's this ledge that goes back from the 31st of January into uh, mid-February. 
that we're in today. So you got a little bit of sand under your keel there if you're sinking and taking on water. Um, this one was fairly interesting, which is uh, a Med Sis A M E D. You got a nice candle out of this one today. Um, 115 was the low on February 28th. Had 900,000 shares. You got into it with 700,000 shares yesterday, just 576,000 shares. You got back into it this, uh, today and a nice move on that one. ANFI. Eh, don't see much in that one right here. Uh, Aries uh, Management, A R E S, on this one. Um, you got eh, just a little lighter volume up here at the top, but it is holding the highs. Arlo, A R L O, uh, kind of a penny stock, but kind of blew up. It's at least testing or retesting the February 12th low. Came down with 24 million shares. And, you know, you basically had uh, 200,000, or I mean, 2 million yesterday. Today, you're up not a lot, 700,000 shares so far. ATAI, which is, uh, I don't know, that's a nut stock. AVEO, which is a Vio Pharmaceuticals, back to the support level where this thing took off. Uh, that goes back to the candle of the 1st of April. So uh, not a bad looking chart out here. I'm not exactly sure I need to read up on it, but that's basically what you're looking for in a pullback. Now you got to, to, to what, 91 cents uh, back up to a possible 185. But uh, I don't know if you're going to get that or not. It's in a bad sector, and that is biotech. Beacon Roofing, we talked about housing and a lot of the negative press. I think everybody got kind of short housing before the uh, earnings. Now we're seeing that you had a big reversal on February 8th. It got to $38.55 with 2.8 million shares. Got into it with 554,000 shares on the 18th. Uh, yesterday, you got into it with 460,000 shares. Today, you got 350,000 shares as you're kind of beaten on the top with fairly light volume. And what else do we have? Uh, we'll skip some of these here that are penny stocks or the Bank of Mellon. Um, I'm not sure about a bank that is all about large fruit, but uh, you never know. Uh, Brookdale Senior Living. Kind of surprising to see this one down with some volume here lately. It's testing the December 26th low at $6.08. That had 2.5 million shares. You got into it a few days ago with 3.5 million shares. Um, today, even now, 2 million shares. So um, kind of interesting to see what used to be stocks that just seemed that couldn't go down, which is these uh, old folks' homes. Do they call them something else now? Is that something else that I'm supposed to learn not to call them old folks' homes? Senior citizens' homes? Seasoned citizen. Um, Barnes & Noble. Oh, we're going to go to Larry in Wyoming. Uh, yeah. How you doing, Larry? Well, I'm good. How you doing, Dave? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. All right, good to hear. By the way, old folks' home, old folks' homes, doesn't matter what you call it, it equals wealth transfer. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Not trying to, yeah. Okay, we'll stick to the uh, market. I have a question about SPY. Uh -huh. And um, I have a question about the May, the standard options. Uh, there's just no interest in May on the, call, on the put side. Yeah, yeah. Um... Does that I, you mean, may I know how you, you don't, you look at things uniquely. So what does that tell you, David? Well, I think I've been talking about how the uh, option market makers have been making a killing since about uh, the late 80s. Uh, probably had the worst six months run that they've had in all of that time. Um, which options you're looking at the May 17? 
Well, yeah, May with uh, 35 days, the standard ones, uh, let's say 290. I mean, I'm seeing uh, outstanding open interest at 251. I've never seen that in my life that low. Which one are you looking at again? Let's say um, the May, the Puts. standard option uh, with 35 days left. Um, if you go to the 290 option, Mm -hmm. you, you you see about um, on my chart uh, 251 open interest. Usually, there's thousands at this time and, of the month. And, and, and you're talking puts or calls? Puts. Okay. And I wonder if you get gain any. What does that tell you? Well, I showed 12,000. Oh man. Okay, no you're talking. Well, hang on a second. That's the 20. Okay, is that right? Let's take a look here. Make sure I got it. Oh, that's April. Excuse me. We got to go out here to May 17th. That's where I was making my mistake. Um, okay, May 17th. 35 days remaining. I, yeah. I'm not joking. Two, hang on, the hang on a second. Level, I'll get there. There's a lot of them. One. Yeah. There's one for every dollar on the spies, right? Okay. Uh, I'm showing uh, on the... Uh, May 17th, right? Showing uh, 21,600. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, the thir with 35 days remaining. Right, I'm showing, I'm showing 21, almost 22,000. 2,000, really? Yeah. Where'd you get the okay. data? Maybe I should call Think or Swim, not David Wayne. <laughs> Well, maybe, yeah, or maybe know. you're looking at the wrong okay. thing. Could be. There's always an option to go look at the CBOE page and download the data directly from them and make sure. Okay. So you you you're, you're you see nothing unusual. Now, when I go to with 59 days remaining, the standard old June third week in June one, the 290 has over 30,000 uh, open yeah, interest. Yeah, that's a, that's about right. I don't see okay. my data so that I'm showing you. I'm showing oh, 21,657. Sorry to trouble you. Don't go to an old folks home yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't do it. Um, but that's on the puts. Um, I can tell you this, though. What you probably are going to get is a lot of hang time, I think, at these highs. Um, I don't think that it's going to instantly roll over. Uh, but I do understand why a lot of people... We're looking at this. You want to hang on through the break? Yeah, of course. Sure. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back with Larry. Um, all I was going to say is that I've seen April uh, highs like this before. And they tend to hang all the way into the first day or two of May. Now, I can see a lot of reasons to be rather bearish here. Uh, one of them is the summation index. The advanced decline line hasn't been good. Yeah. Um, now, maybe that changes a little bit today, but I think that we're still seeing a lot of the big uh, uh, the big leaders being bought and a lot of the other stocks being sold. So um, I would just go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I, I, I dabble in cycle analysis and we're, 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 we're due for um, an intermediate top in the major indices. Whether it's well, everything looks pretty horrible. The only thing I can say is I think you're going to be much better off shorting individual stocks here than trying to go yeah. after the the, uh, the spies or the NASDAQ. Uh, but we shall see. But I think you're going to know here by Friday morning. So I'm not going to get too excited. But again, I yeah. think there are a lot of there's a lot of low hanging fruit, but it's not in these indexes. You know, we're, we're back to having a couple of stocks basically decide the NASDAQ. And as they push these up, they're selling, you know, as much as they can and a lot of other things, um, or at least they're going down. So the market leadership is getting more and more narrow, which is always a problem combined with the light volume. Uh, any kind of surprise uh, could let you set the hook. It's just that we're not that far away uh, from having fun buying start all over again. Um, yeah. The question is whether or not it's even going to matter. It's just going to hang out there for a while. But May, statistically, kind of the best days to short are about the 3rd or 4th of May. Uh, now, in the the, the, the FOMC, David, they know all about this. And um, <laughs> they, they may come out with an announcement that both stokes the equity markets and gold. That's possible yeah. too, right? That is. Yeah, there's just not much going on right now. I'm just saying that in two days, I think we're going to have a much better idea. I've started buying some puts, or I mean some calls, uh, based on thinking that the market could go down. But again, it's not on the spies or the Nasdaq or anything else. So I've got my okay. play. But uh, it is it is going to be one of those things where you want a lot of uh, or very little risk and a lot of reward. So it can't be something that's a coin flip. I got somebody nope. else on the line. Thanks Thank for the you. call. We're going to go to Robert in Kansas City. How are you doing today, Robert? Okay. Last week about GDX, and I'm calling this week about GDX. I want to change up my question. Okay. New GDX chart. 
And so, and I want you to push back or play that. GDX. All I'm hearing is GDX, and then you're cutting out. Yes. Why the GDX chart for 2019 looks different than the GDX chart for 2019. Well, you, hopefully you can call back on a line, a landline, or get next to a cell tire, because all I'm hearing is a lot of dead air and then GDX and something, and GDX and something, so I don't know how to do that. I please call back. Maybe a better line, or maybe uh, stand out on the front porch. Uh, but uh, we look forward to your call again, Robert. Um, okay. What else do we have here? Um, we're going to go back to the charts that we were looking at. Uh, BKS um, testing a low. That's uh, the four dollar and thirty cent low of September six. It's Barnes and Noble. I hadn't quite got there, but only hit it with one and a half million shares over the last few days. Uh, to, 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 uh, what else do we have? I want to look at a couple of them here. Let's look at this one. Chris, C-R-I-S. Um, now, this one's kind of interesting if you're interested in pennies. Uh, you had a big pop up to 265, ran all the shorts on March 25th. You've come all the back, way back and are at fairly decent support levels without much volume either. You got about 20 million shares on the pop. Uh, back here today, we're about 80,000 shares. So fairly light volume in that pullback. Cousins Properties, again, this real estate area, V&Q, has a lot of my attention over the last few days. Um, now, this one actually... Doesn't look all that bad. You got nine dollars and twenty-three cents with twenty-one million shares back on March twenty-fifth. Uh, today you're closing back into the trading range with about five million shares, so not a lot of push on that one yet. Electronic Arts is another one. Um, this one uh, basically going back into the February twenty-second low at ninety-two dollars and eighty-five cents with eleven point six million shares. He had. Uh, 9.6 million shares, so I think there's better out here, but you certainly are back into the trading range today. Uh, energy did not increase on the way back down, so not on my short list or my naughty list. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, Incana, Edge, Integris. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, yeah, let's start at the end of the list. It seemed better today when I was looking at it. Zariba Pharmaceuticals, Z-Y-N-E. Uh, this is back into this gap of the 19th on the way down. Uh, that had about uh, 257,000 shares back into it today with uh, 2.4 million shares. So this thing has gotten a lot of juice lately in it. XOM. Um, the energy stocks were pretty much pushed out before the put last push here in the last couple of days from uh, the thought that maybe there should be some trouble in the Oma, across the Oman Strait, or Strait of Hormuz, actually, of Oman. Uh, and you're back up here with about the same volume you had on November 8th, a little less than December 14th at $81.96. Uh, you had uh, 10 million shares, uh, maybe 10.7 yesterday. Today, about 6 million shares. So a little light on that. Um, two, two, two. What else do we have? Consumer Staples, uh, XLP. This is the November 9th high at $57. 18.5 million shares. Got into it with 13 million shares and a doji yesterday. Uh, pulled back a little. Uh, this one actually looks like one of the weakest uh, of the ETFs out there. XLE, another version of energy coming back into the December 3rd high, $67.99 at 22 million shares. Yesterday you had, let's call it 14 million shares. Today, 7 million shares and a doji. So I think we're getting very close now. Tomorrow, of course, we've got numbers and even numbers after the bell uh, uh, tonight. 
for the API numbers, but uh, I think you want to be watching this fairly closely because these do look fairly, in fact, very weak at the moment. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I uh, got a uh, question here. And not exactly sure what the context is. Notice at the beginning of a buy at the close and uh, buy in the close and sell at the open. Have a strong equity curve to the upside. So you attach anything and read into this. I'll be uh, listening or waiting your reply. By the way, the profits uh, on $100 share each trade. Uh, yeah, the machine learning um, algorithms are out there. And if you do it a bunch of times, they'll learn that that's what you want to do. And a lot of times it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, even before machine learning did it, people would notice these kind of things. And they would continue to work on it and do it. And it works until it doesn't. And that's probably the best thing to say about that. As we said, uh, after the bell, we got lots of earnings that go all the way through uh, Thursday night that will probably move this market, and even a couple on Friday. So doesn't really – kind of very tough to tell 
um, or make too much of a decision other than the fact that the volume is ridiculously light compared to the previous times we've been up here. We're only doing about 4.5 billion shares. Yesterday, we what, we didn't even get to 6 billion on the day. So it's not like everybody's flooding into the market up at these highs. Um, short sale numbers uh, on some stocks are kind of high, but the majority, I'd say 95% of them are incredibly low. Euphoria is very large in a lot of the speculative stocks. Even after they've come off the high, people are nuts about uh, whether they could ever go down. I've always had to be a little nervous uh, when I was in a position. If I was so sure that everything was going to work, it uh, generally went against me. I was just too sure. Um, you always have to be sure enough to be unsure. Be a little nervous. If you're not, hey, you're kind of complacent. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to, and we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.